looking for help for your food addiction and you don't know where to start? Welcome to this series, The Food Addiction Frontlines, where we uncover the expertise and services available for overcoming food addiction. I'm Dr. Vera Tarman, an, ad an addiction physician specializing in sugar and ultra processed food addiction, here to introduce you to the professionals making a difference in this field. In each 15 minute episode, we'll meet leading experts in this field. They will share their journey, their training, and the unique services that they offer for all those struggling with food addiction. So let us help you find the treatment that is best for you. And you can find information about our guest today in the show notes. Today, we speak with Molly Painshaw. Welcome, Molly. Thanks, Vera. Thank you for having me. As always, I'd like to start with what inspired you to work and specialize in the field of food addiction? Tell us your previous background and then how you got into food addiction. I started working in corrections back in 2005, and that led me to want to get my master's degree in mental health counseling. I continued working in corrections for eight years. I was also working on the crisis hotline. I answered a crisis hotline, not just like the national suicide hotline, but also a local crisis hotline. I was working in sexual assault as well as corrections, got into my own private practice and just grew from there. It's 2017. I had already had my own personal journey of polycystic ovarian syndrome and having gained weight and infertility issues. I was at this point, I'd been a licensed addiction counselor, a licensed mental health counselor for quite a while. And it never occurred to me that food could be a substance that was used a lot like alcohol or caffeine or nicotine, anything along those lines. So the year's 2017, my husband says, hey, take a listen to this podcast. I take a listen to the podcast and they're talking about keto as a way of eating in, and its benefits for polycystic ovarian syndrome. I took about a month of, of time to research and I started eating that way in November of 2017. While I was doing that, I made sure that my social media was curated. I was following a gal who actually read your book and she like had the book and she's like holding it up. She's anybody who's following me, this may or may not land for you, but it really landed for me. Check it out. The addiction therapist in me was very curious. So I read the book and I've never looked back. It really opened my eyes that food addiction could be something that people struggle with. And it was time for me to move on from working with other substances and other behaviors. It was so close and parallel to my personal journey with polycystic ovarian syndrome that, yeah, that kind of led me into this field. So I picked up your book. I read it. I immediately wanted to find out if I could get trained in it. And that's when I found Esther's program. I had missed the deadline. The group had already started or that particular session of it had started. In the meantime, I did extra training in becoming a coach because coaching is very different than my life as a therapist. When Esther's program opened up again, a few months later, I joined, I graduated or, or completed in fact back in 2019, 2020. You have the in fact training, you have coach training. And didn't you do Bitten's training as well? I did do Bitten's training as well. Yes. So after I took the Infect program, that's where I was introduced to Bitten Johnson. And so yes, I did the complete holistic addiction medicine course. Tell us now about specific services that you do both one-on-one -on -one and group. Sure. Absolutely. I offer one-on-one -on -one services. My sessions are 30 minutes or 60 minutes. Because not everybody can afford a 60-minute session. Not everybody wants a 60-minute session, but there are people who prefer the 60-minute session. They don't feel like 30 minutes is enough because maybe they're verbal processors. You can schedule with me through Calendly and make it work for your schedule based on what I have as availability there. As an entity of Sweet Sobriety, along with Clarissa Kennedy, we offer the Foundations course, and that's $300 US currently as of this interview, that I run live twice a year, but you can purchase it at any point and do it like a home study or like a work at your own pace. And we offer monthly workshops, which are $50 US currently that again, pick and choose. If that's something that you're into, go ahead and do that. So for example, in November, we're going to be having Charlotte Polson come and be a guest and do four, a four-part series on GLP-1s. We also offer group coaching or group membership. Right now, that's $25 US at the beginning of the year, January 2025, that will go up to $50 US. We offer a lot of psychoeducation, a lot of interaction, a lot of processing. We also offer open question and answer opportunities for people as well. 
And then we have free peer support groups, five a week. They are sometimes facilitated by myself or other coaches who work with us, but they're just peer support. So we're not showing up in coaching or anything like that. We're just offering topics and calling on people to be able to share. So yeah, so we offer a, a great variety of services. Yeah, I can see that. And just to go back to a couple of things, when you do the one-on-one, -on -one, is that coaching or is that therapy? It's coaching only unless somebody physically lives in the state of Montana where I'm licensed for mental health and addiction therapy. Coaching differs because we're not going to dig into the trauma work. Yeah. You can always give me whatever information you want to give me, but it's up to me to know and understand where it crosses that line of therapy and where it's recovery coaching. Okay. And the foundations course, I'm not really clear what that actually means. Oh yeah, absolutely. Great question. So in the foundations, the first four modules are basically talking about how to create your own food plan, determining what foods are too high risk for you to be consuming versus ones that maybe are safer for you to be consuming. Mindful eating techniques and tools. We take you through abstinence, withdrawal, craving, and cross addiction. Our fifth module is on hope and resilience. We give you lots of activities to really build hope and resilience, but also videos of like prior clients sharing their stories. And then the second half of foundations, because now it's 12 modules, really dig into the shadow work, so to speak, or the, right, the ice part of the iceberg we can't see that keeps us going back. We start diving into distress and tolerance, stress management, emotional eating. We talk about building self-compassion, moving toward body neutrality and spirituality. We really run the gamut of giving you this how to basically get yourself on this track you want to be on and the work necessary to do it. We have people who do foundations over and over again. You only have to purchase it one time. Anytime I run it live, you're always welcome to join. That's twice a year. It's 12 weeks, right? So a good half of the year, you could be doing some of this more intense work. And people like doing it multiple times because they're able to go back in. And like one of our most profound assignments is this letter we call the grief letter or the breakup letter. So the first time through, we want everybody to write it to those specific food items, whatever those might be. This time around, we've got people who this is their third, fourth time through, and they're writing it to social media. They're writing the letters to perfectionism, yeah, that kind of thing. So it's really interesting to watch it just get deeper and deeper for people. It, it almost sounds like your secular version of a 12-step program, but it's the Sweet Sobriety Foundational Program. Yeah, it is. So it's based on, it's based on what Clarissa and I took from our previous years of working yeah. Um, in other agencies with people who have substance use disorder um, concerns. We took all of that, we tailored it to the food. And then we put it in that specific order because it's just like that kind of natural progression that I'm sure yeah. you've seen yourself, right? That you just watch people go through when they're on this journey. Yeah, and then you're guiding them along. Yeah. And then the other question is the group. So it sounds like there's two types of, so there's the Clarissa, Molly and Sweet Sobriety led groups, which are part of the, the group membership. And then there's yes. three groups. Correct. Yeah. So the group membership is, like I said, it's paid for. And then there's psychoeducation. There's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of coaching. That's a really good option if you can't afford individual sessions. A lot of people can only afford the group option. It's so much cheaper. Even when the price goes up, it's still, I think, something like $2.50 a, a session, a, a group, if you came to all five of them every week. And granted, that doesn't work for everybody. And then the free groups are just this op opportunity to experience a peer support group that isn't 12-step because we know that not everybody yes. feels that 12-step is a place for them. And a, a lot of times we do have people who go to both. They don't have to be like at odds with each other. They're just another, yeah. they're just another option. You have a pretty comprehensive program and, and a person could either just take one part of it or they could do the whole thing. Yeah, totally. We have people who come and only do foundations. We have people who come and only do group membership. We have people who only do the free groups. Whatever it is that works for you, we're here for it. If you need help and we need to increase that support, we have options in order to increase the support. That's great. I so appreciate you offering the uh, free support in the Facebook group, the I'm Sweet Enough Sugar Free for Light. Yeah. Okay. What would you say is a strength that you bring yeah, yeah. to sweet sobriety and to the food addiction world? What is unique about what you offer? I think a strength that I bring is probably the fact that I am a clinician, that I did get my master's degree in mental health counseling, that I have spent all the numbers of hours of practicum and supervision to be licensed. I have to get 40 um, hours of continuing education every year to maintain both of my licenses. 
but I also bring a very trauma informed, very mental health informed focus, like forward focus to this whole thing that's unique to myself. Clarissa and I make a really great team and she has that background too, but I think that's primarily my strength. Her strength is really the education piece and being able to talk about the science in a way that I can't talk. I can make it really relatable for people that I can really meet people where they're at and find, help them find a way. Yeah, I've seen you working. You seem to really enjoy stuff that a lot of people would be afraid of, which is the darker, oh, more yeah. informed stuff that you were right in there. Another thing that um, I bring to the field that's maybe unique is that um, I really lean into harm reduction as a tool for um, people on this journey. That doesn't mean that I don't believe in abstinence and that my clients um, don't use abstinence as a tool. Um, but I really come at it from that harm reduction place first. If somebody is in front of me and says, listen, I've tried harm reduction. I've done the things. It's not working for me. It's time for me to go cold turkey or for me to be just 100% abstinent. I'm right there with them. If they're the person that's, listen, every time I try to just cut it out, then my binge eating disorder pops up or I feel too restricted. Then I have another, I have other tools that I can offer them. If it's somebody who's constantly relapsing, you would rephrase that term from relapsing your failing to coaching it into a different type of goal. Yeah, absolutely. I don't believe in such a thing as I hear the term chronic relapser a lot, and I just don't believe in that. I've never actually heard that term in my professional career until I came to food addiction. I do believe in a phenomenon called chronic ambivalence. And that's the thing that keeps us in and out. That's real, right? So we know from the stages of change that chronic ambivalence is real. And yes, so I definitely reframe it as this is just information. You've got one foot in, one foot out. And so what is, you know, right? So let's talk about that piece that feels resistant to this idea of going all in on this journey. Let's talk about what feels safe, what doesn't feel safe. What's the information that's coming up? That would be the tool of harm reduction because you're basically honoring them where they are. What do you do when uh, somebody comes to you with a dual diagnosis, often unexposed once the food is gone? Yeah. So when once we're clear, that's what it is. And maybe they didn't know about it before. I have spent lots of time helping people find a person or several people who can be their support network. This has happened multiple times. Depending on what it is that's showing up, I have done the search for them to try to find a provider. I try to offer three to five options for wow. people to start with, to reach out to, just because I want to make sure that they're not just picking the first person who pops up on psychology today, <laughs> that I've done a little bit on those people that, and I feel a good fit. Do you try to involve family? What's your work with the support system? Yeah, I've definitely had sessions where um, spouses have been included, where um, older children have been included. I've sat on Zoom with clients before teaching people how to scramble an egg, like whatever level of involvement uh, that is required. And if I can give it, if it's in that legal ethical parameter and within like my wheelhouse, I'll give it totally. Yeah. Okay. You're doing frontline work. How do you not get in the way of your clients when you're dealing with stuff that might even trigger you? Yeah, that's a really great question. My clients' successes are their successes. My clients' failures are their failures. It's not mine to own. It is simply my job is to make sure that I'm asking really good questions. Their job is to be an expert in them. So my personal anything does not show up when I'm working with clients. Now, do I get on my personal soapbox sometimes about social justice issues because the advocate in me like it's activated? Yes, yes, but nothing, but I don't take my personal what worked for me and try to put that on anybody else. That's not, that's none of my business and that's not really how this works at all, yeah. So person is listening and they're going, I'm interested. What's the next steps for them? How can they find out about you? What would you suggest they do next? I would suggest they just go to our website, www.sweetsobriety.ca. The best way to get a hold of me is probably email, which is info at Sweet Sobriety. If you go to our website, you can go to the about page and see myself, Clarissa, our other coaches. I have a button right on there that you can click to get your free 30 minute consultation. Yeah. You can always email me. I'll give you that link. Honestly, you can find me. I am the only Molly Payne shop that exists in the world. So if you Google me and Molly Payne shop pops up, rest assured that is definitely me. So you can find me through Facebook Messenger, Instagram Messenger, WhatsApp, 
Um, seriously, I'm on all the platforms and because my business is virtual, right? I do all my work virtually. It all syncs to my laptop, my Chromebook, my phone. So yeah, whatever method you choose that works the best for you, it works for me too. Okay, right on. Do you have any last words to give somebody who's listening? Sure. I would just say really get to know somebody, take them up on their 30 minute consultation, their 15 minute consultation and use the whole time. Go into it with questions for that person. They work for you. So make sure that you're feeling comfortable. Don't feel like you have to make a decision right in that moment. Just because you've taken that call with somebody, they've given you those free 30 minutes. Please don't feel like you have to sign up with them because they gave you something free for 30 minutes. They offer it for a reason. I think the therapist in me just very much wants you to get the help and support that you need, whether it's with me or Clarissa or whomever else is being interviewed. Find the fit for you. And then don't be afraid if it ends up not working for you to find something else because there is no one right way to do this. All right. Thank you so much, Molly. Big sugar is Thank you. Corrupting the minds of the teens. Expelling you not to proceed. Your body is your temple. Your mind is your key to a life tapped into happiness. Have it. Don't dream it. If only you could see it. It's all in you and